Projects are definitely one of the best ways that you can develop your data visualization skills and as well they look excellent on a resume. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you five different projects that you can work on yourself to become a data visualization wizard. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's McKay, if you're new around here and on this channel we talk about different tech strategies, tools and tips to help us become better in our data analytics skills. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about five different projects that you can work on to improve your data visualization skills and as well your analytical skills. You can do these in R, Python, Tableau, Power BI, really whatever you are using should work. It doesn't really matter what you're doing them in, just really the importance is that you're practicing, you're creating these projects, adding them to your portfolio, resume, and help you become better at data visualization. So the first one that I recommend is actually doing something with the coronavirus data. So the coronavirus data, there's a lot of free data that you can get from a lot of places, such as the CDC or worldometers. And since this data is free, you can use web scraping to get the data, or you can find somewhere where you can download the data and kind of manipulate it and create a visualization around however you want to create whatever you're trying to analyze and visualize. There's a lot of cool things that I've seen with coronavirus data. For example, if you're looking at this guy here on Twitter, he creates really cool visualizations. He has been doing this ever since the start of coronavirus. If you're looking at unique ideas and if you're looking at unique ways to derive information from the data, then it's gonna be really interesting and it shows that you can think kind of outside the box. The one thing that I would recommend with the coronavirus data though is that you're not creating false information. For example, we've seen with the news and with a lot of people, whether it be on Twitter or on TV or just in different blog posts, you can really skew the data to make it look how you want to make it look. And it can throw off what the actual data is behind the visualization. So you should always make sure that you are doing it in a way that you're going to be able to analyze objectively, not subjectively. Although a lot of times in our analysis, we throw in subjective traits, but if you're able to visualize and analyze objectively, the coronavirus data is a really good project to do. So the next visualization project idea and number two on our list is sports visualization. So this is for all the sports junkies out there and I know there's a lot of them. Sports visualization is a great way to be able to show that you know how to analyze the performance and performance metrics. So if you're able to use sports data, which there is a ton of sports data out there, for example, there's sports reference where they have FB ref as well as they have different basketball and baseball metrics that you can pick up as well as the sports data and sports visualization is going to allow you to compare and contrast different players teams metrics see how people are performing on certain scales percentiles there's a lot of cool things that you can do on sports data for example I am pretty active on Twitter when it comes to creating sports visualization for my favorite sports soccer and it's a really good way for me to one, practice my visualization skills and create projects and kind of present those to others, get feedback. And sports is something that a lot of people resonate with. And if you can contribute and show in a very clear way and analyze data in a very clear way, then sports is definitely something that you should consider creating. For example, if you're interested in basketball, you can create a cool heat map or create a cool shot chart of different players, different teams, see the trends, see what they're doing, really analyze the data. You can create a write-up of the data and analysis as well. Really cool ideas and a lot of different things you can do out there. The next thing is for all you personal finance and all you finance gurus. If you're interested in Wall Street, if you're interested in anything to do with finance, then creating a personal finance portfolio and analysis with visualizations is really one of the coolest things that you can do with data visualization. So this includes doing things such as tracking your finances, tracking your expenses, tracking your income, tracking a bunch of different things over the course of a couple weeks, couple months, even if you wanna do it over an entire year, and then making a visualization around all of that topic. You could look at things such as, where am I getting my income from? How much am I making per month? How much am I making per week? How much am I weight making on average per hour that I work? Maybe you already know all this stuff, but being able to visualize it really helps 
one, portray that information to others as well. You can learn a lot more about yourself than just by looking at raw numbers. For example, if you're able to create a portfolio and create a visualization that shows where you're spending your money, the kind of different categories of where you're spending your money, you'll be able to get a lot of insights. And as well, you can show this to, for example, if you're interested in working in finance, you could show this to an employer recruiter and they would be really impressed and be really excited about what else you could do for them. And then on top of that, you can do any sort of analysis and you can cut things and kind of show month over month or week over week of what cutting things did and how much you were able to save. A lot of cool ideas out there. Obviously, if you're into finance, this is not the only thing. You could do something with stocks as well and create kind of a visualization on stocks, which would be really cool. So number four is creating a geographical visualization. So this is what a lot of people are looking at, whether it be in consumer data or if you work, you know, if you're creating visualizations for the government, they are always looking at geographical, demographical data to be able to make predictions or analyze the different data that comes from ge geographic locations. So for example, if you're interested in politics, you can create a geographical visualization in where you are creating a visualization on voting results for certain states, certain counties, cities, etc. And you can look at the different ways that people are voting, how they're not voting, what people are doing with trends and everything. As well, there's a lot of very simple geographical data that you can analyze. For example, you can just look at something as simple as country populations. But being able to, one, understand this geographical data and being able to use latitude and longitude, sometimes that's auto-generated for you, sometimes it's not. But being able to use this data is really going to help you better analyze and create better visualizations that you can put on a project or a resume. And this is really something that a lot of employers are looking for. So last up is actually creating some commerce visualization. So anything to do with e-commerce or sales data, anything really that is going to contribute to a business and being able to analyze customers and analyze the sales data and trends in their sales. So a lot of companies are actually looking to be able to understand their sales data. So if you're able to take this data, visualize it, and then convey this message to a CEO or head of marketing, head of sales, head of whatever in the company, you're really going to stand out because this data is something that is really important to a lot of people. I mean, they're really always wanting to understand and how to make more sales, how to improve their product. So if you are able to just get a data set, I mean, if you work for a company, you can get a data set inside of your company, that would be awesome. If not, there's a lot of free data sets out there. I mean, you can go on Kaggle, you can just Google commerce or sales data set, and you'll be able to find something that you can manipulate, create a visualization, and then it'll look really good on your resume portfolio. And it's a project that is really important and has a lot of value in the long run. I just, if I were an employer, which I'm not, but if I were to employ somebody, this is something that I would be really interested in, especially if I my company had anything to do with sales. And if you can turn this into like a dashboard or like an automated dashboard and say Tableau, Python, R, Power BI, if you can turn this into something that's automated, that would be super cool, super interesting, and it would really help create a better experience for somebody, say, that they just pull up like their sales data, they get a bunch of visualizations, charts, metrics, and you're the one that created that, like, that's just, that'd be really cool. Like, I don't even know why I haven't done that yet. But anyways, there's a project idea. So that is it guys for the five project ideas that I would recommend that you get started on. There's a lot of obviously cool projects and things that you can do with data visualization. I would recommend checking out the book in the description below. It's Data Visualization by Andy Kirk. One of my favorite books, a place that I get a lot of ideas and inspiration from. Be sure to leave a comment down below as well of any projects that you're gonna be trying out or ones that you've already done that you've liked and maybe other people would like as well. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Maybe you can make a data visualization in the amount of times that I ask you to subscribe before you actually subscribe. That'd be really interesting. <laughs> if you liked this video, there is a playlist down below has to do with data visualization tutorials, as well as I have some other cool playlists that have to do with machine learning topics, data science, coding, a lot of fun stuff. So be sure to check those out and I will see you guys in the next video.